Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Fan Behavior, an F1 podcast that we were formerly known <laughs> as. Um, we are truly recording this, I mean, two, two minutes after the yeah. broadcast ended. So we are quick. If there is anything that happens post-race, any penalties, any disqualifications. You found out before so we did. So sorry, and uh, we're not, we, we're not going to have time to re-record this, so you're just going to get, you're going to get this version get of the race. You don't throw a fit, um, they say. As many people know, we um, had a wedding this weekend, and so if we miss certain things, if, you know, we don't get to everything, just show us some grace mm-hmm. this weekend. We were... Busy girls. Um, should we just jump in? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then. Well, also happy that it's race weekend again. Yeah. Haven't had this in a long time. Right. Like and forever ago. Yeah. Nothing like a triple header when we're about to get busy again. Exactly. It's super helpful. Exactly. For my mental state. Yes. <laughs> it's so fun. I'm also wearing the shirt hand I got me for my birthday, which is the um, anniversary of last year. Now, mm-hmm. you know, it was redemption for one, not so much for the yeah. other, but we'll get to it. Okay. Before the race stuff, just wanted to touch on a couple things. The Enchante drop. Yeah. We both got the same shirt. We not did. intentionally. Yeah. But, but not surprised. <laughs> love it. Loved Super seeing cute. the pop up. It seemed like lots of people went to the pop up in Austin. Yeah. Which I'm is desperate great. for the jacket. So um, if anyone from Enchante is listening, we would love, well, the whole collection, but <laughs> <laughs> we'd love everything. Yeah. Um, so that, that was fun for us. Um, they also decided they came out and basically said no more fastest lap points in 2025. Now, so stupid. some people are calling this the Ricardo rule. Um, because okay. of Daniel Ricardo taking the fastest lap away from Lando last race and the implications of that. Now, the reality is just have the fastest lap only be for the top 10. Don't, don't let someone from the bottom from don't, you know, yeah. just get the point if it's in the top 10, uh, or, or Isn't it can that what only they do? be from the top 10. Oh. No, no. Like you can, you, you don't get a point if oh, you, but you can still, but you can still it. get it. Yes, yeah, okay. exactly. Um, and we saw that happen today where someone, you know, we'll, and we, we can get to it, but they got, a f- they went for the fastest lap to take it away from yeah. somebody that had it. Which is also just like, it's part of the strategy. game. Yeah. It's part of the thing. I'm now, just so tired of everyone whining about stuff. I get it from the sense of the whole Red Bull V carb. Did Daniel do that to help Max? You know what I mean? Sure. I get it from that perspective, but I think you could deal with that situation, that dynamic. Um, but to just do away with it completely is weird. I yeah. like having that. Yeah, I do too. So it's just, dumb. it's very strange. There's other rules I feel like we could have focused on. Yes. And then Red Bull, there's been a lot of kerfuffle in the last week or so <laughs> because teams have come out post Singapore, um, basically claiming that Red Bull has a piece on their car that could be used to adjust the height of the um, car's floor in between. It's so like, you know, once a car is done in, qualifying goes into park for men you cannot change anything within the car Mm -hmm. before the race and what these teams have claimed is that this this piece could be used to like change the height post qualifying pre or like what you know during Uh. the race so it can like make a setup change essentially between qualifying and the race but technically the car hasn't been touched hasn't been dealt with you know what i mean and so red bull has has come out and said yes this 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 piece does exist but um basically we don't use it it's never been used which everyone's kind of like okay sure you know sure jan but now they're now they're saying they're gonna not they're gonna take it out and they're not going to okay. like, they've come to some sort of agreement with the fia that we're gonna okay. remove that piece and not because if have you're it not gonna use it why is it in the car right so anyway, you know, we've seen this a lot this season with the McLaren rear wing yeah. and all these things. Everyone's looking for the loophole. Now, there have been some people that are, have said this isn't a loophole. This is cheating. Yeah. I'm not well versed enough in the rules and regulations of Formula One to for me for me to judge and say, yes, yeah. this is cheating or this is a loophole. But it feels like a loophole that could be incredibly on the line or yes, crossing the yes. line. But I do agree that it's likely a loophole. But everyone's pushing the boundaries, especially yeah. these top teams. It's what this whole sport is about. Yes. Yes. Uh, but so whatever. we'll wait and see if anything else transpires from that. But um, And then I just wanted to give a special shout out to Yuki's fits recently. Yeah. Because he's been showing up and showing out. His outfit that he wore on media day Fantastic. was so great. Then he, I mean, but every day he's showed up has always just He's just really coming into his own, Mm -hmm. and I really appreciate it. Yeah, and shout out to Honda, who's fighting the good fight. Yeah, advocating for Yuki every day. (laughs) 
<laughs> Doing because someone can. fucking has Doing to. Doing what they can. <laughs> um, okay, let's get to because lots of things happened this weekend. So let's get to sprint qualifying. Yeah. Okay, so I think the biggest first thing was Oscar loses his lap time is out in SQ1. Bummer, Bummer. for Oscar. Yeah. Oscar, um, you know, he didn't, as he never does, he mm-hmm. never shows much emotion, but sad for him. Mm-hmm. Alex Albon spins and gets out. Yeah. Um, I'm like, we said this before. I wonder about Alex, like even today with the race. Yeah. It's sort of, he's sort of being exposed a little bit. Now, to be fair, there was the, in the race today, like we'll get to it. There was the incident, um, at at the very beginning that kind of like bunched a bunch of those guys back and kind of screwed their race basically. But I don't know. It's curious. It's curious. I like Alex and I'm a fan of his, but I just this is his first time he's had competition as post max. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't around um, for that era. Also, Liam Lawson's first race weekend back, and he also, I mean, a lot of people were losing lap times, but he also then lost his lap time in SQ two and was mm-hmm. out, or he got, you know, he was bumped down to fifteenth, which was obviously a bummer for him. And the Hosses, I feel like, yeah. are just cooking. Crushing. They've surpassed this this weekend they've surpassed v-carb in the standings they are now p6 and they are just both k-mag and nico in the top 10 like strong obviously max got pulled do you have anything else from sprint quality you wanted to show um out? no I, I will say that i just think it's so crazy when because to me it just feels like so violent like when alex spun around during and yeah. all, all he says is sorry yeah and he just seems because i know they're that so well though. i know he did and i know that they're all like it's not their first rodeo right. if you will love the texas pun um but yeah i just i'm always f- so fascinated that any well any crash they're just mm-hmm. like i'm okay i'm sorry yeah it's like okay yeah anyway. yeah they never seem super freaked out yeah or i know and then max getting pulled i was sort of I haven't, I mean, we're not used to Max getting pole position. No, so. well, he hasn't had gotten pole for a race since Imola. Yeah. So, and also cr- watching Coda on TV, like, tripped me out for a second. Crazy. Because there's just so much of the track. I've it's never a fun really race to watch. Before. It is fun. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, it's where is one. that? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, Yuki got into SQ3. Franco also did. They're both, yeah, they both did well. So, okay. Sprint race. Yeah. It was a good sprint. I was comparing it, thinking about it to last year's sprint. Now, obviously, we were there in person last year, so there were things we didn't get. But from what I could remember from last year, there wasn't a, a lot of movement. People weren't really – it was sort of everyone just kind of stayed where they qualified. Yeah. I feel like in this sprint, there was more battles. Yes. Lando obviously has a great start, mm-hmm. um, which is, as we'll get to later – not normal. Not normal. Sorry, sorry, Lando. But I really feel like this was the sprint race. Uh, the most interesting part was the battle between Charles and Carlos. Yeah, Carlos is gives no f's. No, he is. Uh, he's yeah. racing for himself. Exactly. Um, as they both do, and I thought it was. I you know as we. I mean, I keep saying it. I, I'm not always the biggest Carlos fan, but I was respecting mm-hmm. the battling. I was mm-hmm. respecting the ambition. Um, he got P two, so good for him respect where it is deserved and earned yuki and checo (laughs) all weekend all weekend yeah yuki had yuki was fighting for something yuki was he was fighting for daniel (laughs) well (laughs) he's fighting for himself (laughs) um you can tell and of course i mean obviously as the dominoes start to fall with v carb and the sort of reshuffling is happening of course yuki's thinking this is my chance, yeah. you know? Um, and, oh, we didn't even mention in sprint quality, Checo got out in SQ2. Mm-hmm. Um, Which was yeah, shocking. And he got out qualified. He got out because Yuki out qualified mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. So definitely was. Which, might I add, isn't the first time. No, definitely not the first time. Not the first time at all. And it wasn't by much, but still. But still. It matters. Yeah. Um, and I mean, Checo did end up passing Yuki, but I don't know. There just seems to be a little bit added spice or intrigue or yeah. something with that battle. Um, <laughs> the Fernando Liam beef. Yeah, they are. The girlies are fighting. Well, first of all, Fernando being like this alpha tower is an idiot. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, he refuses to call them RB V car, whatever. Fair enough. It's, as a mouthful. We. it's alpha tower. was just a great name. It was. It should have yeah. stayed that. Um, yeah, he was, and I was a fan of Toro Rosso. Yeah, it's okay. yeah, me too. Um, 
I'm surprised he didn't say that, honestly, because I feel yeah. like that was the OG, obviously. Uh, yeah, he was not happy. And then after the race, I don't know if well, you saw the pictures yeah, of but I didn't Fernando confronting Liam and being like, what the hell? And I actually saw a video of them kind of waiting in line. When, because I think Fernando approached Liam while they were waiting in line to get weighed. And <laughs> so funny. there's a video of Yuki standing in front. He's in front of them and he keeps looking back, like waiting, pausing, trying to, he's clearly trying, trying to, to listen hear. to what they're saying. God, I'd love that. Um, yeah, it's like, well, of course I'd be like, what is going on? Like, why is and this? Also, stop yelling at him like i know <laughs> well i mean it's funny in some ways because fernando yeah. does it to everyone in some capacity like sure. i actually was thinking about do you remember when like it's a rite of passage maybe fernando and this was a couple maybe a couple years ago fernando and yuki were racing and fernando w- oh. whacked his finger yeah. and then yuki reshared the video and did the salute emoji <laughs> which was so funny <laughs> um so maybe that's what he was thinking he was like mm, i've been yeah. there before yeah um that would be scary if i was liam and I fernando know. alonzo was pissed at me i'd be like yay <laughs> be like i'm so sorry i've been watching this guy my entire I mean, existence that's why i'm not a formula one driver because i'd be like oh my god i'm so sorry yeah, like, that's I the reason didn't intend yeah yeah um no but so tr- like fernando's been alive or yeah racing yeah for almost as long as liam's Liam's been been alive alive. yeah so it's like oh my god (laughs) exactly (laughs) maybe maybe as long i don't i actually don't know when uh fernando got into formula one but But i did hear that his 400th gp is next weekend which is crazy crazy yeah Um, i thought alex's 100th was this weekend i was like wow that's a lot (laughs) it's a lot well and i also was thinking because fernando's whole thing was like we don't need to be racing this because they were what in p i don't know like 16 or something Mm. And he was basically like, we don't need to be racing like this aggressively back here. But am I, I mean, of course, Liam also is fighting for his future. Every, he's yeah. hungry and, and ambitious. Sorry, Fernando. Yeah. <laughs> you have never fought that hard in the back. Right. right. For real. Yeah. You're just mad because it's a sprint and you're losing to a little kid. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then I was, I, I also wrote that um, Lando was probably pissed off that he lost that second place to, um, Carlos yeah like at the very end Carlos got him and I don't know Lando's weekend's been kind of like up and down and he's he's felt off he's felt off yeah and because even like in the interviews and stuff he's very like nonchalant yeah. about it he's not yeah. even like berating himself no like well and this does. is a weekend for him to like really chip into the lead that Max has on him and he didn't do that yeah. at all I mean in fact Max gained points on him so I don't know with five races to go kind of like I sort of think it's not going to happen. Probably not. Unless something crazy goes down. But anyway, anything else um, from the sprint race you wanted to touch on? No. I know we're kind of flying no, through all No, it's fine. Because, um, yeah, I didn't have that much. Okay. Um, okay. Qualifying. Lewis out in Q1. So th- I, I, I oh, should cool. preface. I, I, I watched the sprint race while I was getting ready for the wedding. I was in the wedding. So um, I, my whole day was busy and whatnot but i i made sure to watch the sprint but the qualifying was literally during the ceremony yeah so i actually found hannah right after um and was like what's going on with the qualifying and we caught up on the very at the very end and then i rewatched it actually when i got back last yeah, night i watched some of it um so i saw that lewis had gotten out in q1 but i didn't know what had happened mm-hmm. and i still am like I still what really happened yeah. i mean i think their issue is just like something with the setup something wasn't right they, they didn't put, go out till really late they right? didn't well they the went out early they did an early lap mm. and then and then they did a lap after but oh. i think that kind of and i don't know it just was really strange and weird yeah. bad weekend for lewis terrible like well it gets worse only gets worse from here <laughs> and he offered to give well we'll get to george obviously but he was like george can take my upgraded parts like Which i just so nice well and i wonder like what's the motive here i mean maybe it is just being nice or maybe he just felt like well i'm not gonna be making many or maybe he just hates the upgrades and yeah. he's just like i'd like to go back take to the care. original spec um didn't matter anyway yeah <laughs> williams got out uh, both of them got out i think in q1 mm-hmm. which was also kind of weird because i feel like they've both been especially franco yeah has been doing well but he's an angel honestly like i need him i know i love him year. he's so funny like also, if we just go like a year without him that's so sad he is so funny on social media and his interviews and stuff he like tells people that to like not buy merchandise like not buy team merchandise because it's too expensive oh. um <laughs> and like he'll i think he was talking to Alex about, oh, they're talking about like restaurants or something. And some, I think they're talking about like some nice steak or something. And I think Alex asked Frank Goofy had ever had. And he was like, no, I'm, I'm too poor 
Like I don't have the money for, to go eat at these places. I don't know. He just is funny. I I enjoy him. Well, I think I he's good. Because I feel like the, the pay gap between F two and F one is incredible. Oh, sure. Wild. And I know he. I'm, I mean, obviously, I'm sure he's making like decent money, but he's not making the money of yeah. He, he doesn't have like Max personal Verstappen. sponsors yet. Yeah. yeah. He's not making 40 million. Yeah. yeah. He actually might have personal Cause I know that like someone is sponsoring some Argent, like he has sponsorship money that he's, that they're giving Williams like mm. to like kind of sponsor his seat. But anyway, the point is he's funny. He doesn't have he's, brand deals. Is right. What I mean. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. He's not, not like the face not of a tequila yet. yet. Not yeah. yet. He, he definitely he's not the Ralph Lauren poster boy right, right. now. Right. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, he, he, should be he's like a good yeah, looking no, he's kid just too fresh. He's, he's, he's too, too fresh, fresh on the scene um, i don't know him yet he i mean i just don't really understand maybe he doesn't want the sauber seat that's because that's the thing someone actually suggested that i saw on social media someone was like maybe he understands and knows that he's good enough to like yeah get a better seat and if he gets stuck in yeah i guess i could see that but i also feel like when you when you if you let a seat pass you by it's like you, you just don't, never, you know. never know yeah and someone else su- suggested there were like, is there a chance? I don't think so. But they were like, is there a chance that Williams is like, hmm, maybe we put Franco with Carlos? I can't discuss that at this time. That I, would make me so sad. I know. I like, I kind of understand. Like, well, he has what, does been Alex better. Leave he or does has Alex been go better. To I don't know. I don't think contract? it's going to happen. I mean, the contract, I, 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 I get another would have 10, to probably pay, pay a shit ton of money to yeah. get out of that contract. And I don't think it's going to happen, but huh. I just am like, but it is a fair question because, yeah. and it's more of a fair question if you're talking to a, like a Red Bull type of team, because Williams y- maybe doesn't have the capital to be able to make such rash decisions or Red Bull should. That's what Franco. I go. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I mean, honestly, I mean, we'll get to Liam. And I think obviously we say this all the time. Like we, as a, as a collective organization, organization, <laughs> I don't know, sport, a sport. Oh, we judge things so quickly. Yeah, it's like course. someone has a great race. Oh my God. They need to be in the, the great seat. Then the next week it's bad. Yeah. And like even with Liam, it's like, okay, well he didn't have a great sprint yeah. situation, but then he has a great, great race. Well, that's, I mean, that's how that's, it goes. Yeah. But like, it can flip flop yeah, very we need quickly. To be, look at the whole, the whole picture yeah, holistically, as we always say. Yeah. And Franco, I think, has done whatever. How many races has he done? Three, two, one. I yeah, think he's done. I think. I think this is his fourth. fourth. Monza, Baku, Singapore, and all of them have been really strong. Yeah. So, I, I just, yeah, I'll be really bummed for him if he doesn't get a seat. And I'm trying to think of where he would go if he waited. I guess there's probably something open up. I I don't know. I just. Yeah. I also. It, we were watching the um, grid walk and he either like doesn't know who Martin Brundle is, which seems like it could be a real possibility um, or was told do not speak to any media he at all. Beelined. Yeah. I mean, he was just staring him down, like <laughs> would not talk to him. <laughs> so funny. He's like, um, I'm Martin Brundle's guy. Too. Oh yeah. 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 And he's just like, neat. Gotta <laughs> go. <laughs> um, I also laughed in qualifying when Yuki was trying to tell because Liam had like a 60 <laughs> yeah. place grid penalty. So he wasn't really going, he only got into Q2 in order to help Yuki, Yuki get into Q3. But then Yuki was trying to tell him how to give him a slipstream properly. Um, which was just kind of funny. Yeah. It didn't work. There's too much dust or something. Yeah, <laughs> Yuki got out in Q2, but yeah. um, maybe next time. <laughs> but you know who didn't is Kevin Magnus. I know. I was going to write strong from Pierre and strong from K-Mac. Yeah. K-Mac's had a good weekend. Yeah, he has. Well, I guess the race wasn't so good for him but uh, with the immediate pit stop he had to make. That was seemed like it was, yeah. you know, SOS, SOS. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, it's actually Kevin, a bummer he box. didn't get, he got points in the sprint race, but it's a bummer he didn't get points in the race. He deserved to get points in the race. But yeah, yeah Pierre um, qualified. I, well, it was technically P7, but sort of the race P6. George's crash, um, which is a bummer for George, obviously had messed up his whole car, but then it prevented so many people from setting fastest laps. Max was probably going to get pole position, mm-hmm. but lap was killed. No dice. Checo had lost his original lap time because of track limits and then was trying to, you know, complete a lap, but couldn't do it. So bummer for the Red Bull unit as a whole. Yeah. Um, we don't have to keep, you know ragging on Checo or sort of like the I didn't say anything no 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 I know I'm <laughs> I'm just like prefacing like it's yeah. just we we know the situation at Red Bull yeah. it, it's not new it's not shocking it is what it is and, and it's not based on talent and it's and it's just 
I'll be curious to see. I, I, I am curious. really am curious to see what they choose to do. Me too. Um, that's going to be very interesting. Um, anything else from qualifying? No. Okay. To the race. Um, or do you want to talk about anything from the grid walk? Any points or mentions? No, I felt like the grid walk was kind of lacking. Yeah, there was not as many celebrities. No, we don't know who did the checkered flag. Yeah, um, as of right now, I should keep But like, I was Twitter. hopeful for like a Glenn Powell appearance. Yeah, like, where's Matthew McConaughey? Although, to be fair, we did see some of our Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Yeah. Sorry. I, th- I think Glenn Powell was there this weekend, just not. Yeah. Oh, and like Paul yeah. Meskel was there earlier this week. Yeah, and I um, saw that. But, you know, it's like, yeah. I want them to be harassed by Martin Brundle. Harassed. Um, yeah, I we didn't see any of that. So it's just like, give us more of what we're looking for. Yeah. Um. Okay, so the start. You know, we had sort of said, we had sort of asked each other, will Lando keep this start? And I think we all kind of felt like probably not. Probably not. I didn't expect Charles Leclerc no. coming in from fourth to immediately get in front and never lose it again. Yeah. But obviously loved it. And yeah, it's just, I don't know what the issue is, what the issue is with Lando. I don't know if it's, I, I don't know what it is, but it's just like all the time i know well and that's what we were talking about too like when he was being interviewed by gunther after the um sprint race yeah and he was like you know you did such a good job keeping the lead i know that's something hard for you and he kind of got defensive and was like well it's just a couple times but every other like most of the time i do a really good job yeah and i was like no most of the time you lose it (laughs) yeah well and it's funny comparing it to the sprint race when he was in fourth or something for the sprint or I, I can't remember where he started, but he did. He made up a bunch of spots. Yeah. But then for some reason, whenever he is in the lead, he just. Well, I just also like uh, this sounds dumb, but I just feel like he, do- he doesn't have a lot of practice starting from the front. He has a lot of practice trying to get ahead at the start from yeah. being a few places behind. Or so, just a different style of driving. Yeah. When you're def- bending sort of the, the your position at the front versus when you're attacking yeah and obviously max is great at it because he had 17 years of practice <laughs> right um so i don't know it's just it's just it's just one of those things where now we go into if if he ever gets pulled it just sort of I, feels I know, like I wish he did didn't get pulled i know because i feel like he has a better chance of doing what he needs to do if he starts second or third right exactly um <laughs> but good on chuck so the the, stru- the start was pretty chaotic not so much in the front but there was a lot of chaos in the back yeah. and there was a bunch of cars kind of in that like p i don't know 13 to like 16 17 range it was like esteban alex maybe like lance i can't remember who else who all Joe, got kind of caught up yeah and esteban looked like or alex kind of hit esteban mm-hmm. spun him around um and that kind of screwed their race. They ended up, you know, in the or at least Esteban was in the back. Liam and Lewis, and I think th- I think it was those two avoided all of that. And maybe Franco too. Yeah, yeah. And kind of <laughs> managed way up. And Martin being like Lewis in P twelve screamed it, <laughs> which like, was very exciting. It was exciting which because it lasted he was, longer. Yeah. Um. And then it was immediately Lewis into the gravel, which was just Ugh, it was just heartbreaking. It was just tough. I I, I feel. I feel he's really had a bad. cloud this weekend. I feel like it's just been a hard weekend for him. Yeah. Yeah. I think he, he's ready to move he's, on. It's like he's senioritis. You yeah, know? totally. Like he is ready to graduate and move on to his next, uh, adventure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and we, we did get some shots of his replacement Kimmy, uh, behind Toto. Always just standing behind Toto. They yeah. have to just stand. He, he also went to the, uh, Texas Georgia game on Saturday night with, Jack doing and I, and I I would love to just be like what did you think of that yeah. experience I'm you know Italians I think like Europeans understand like, chaotic yeah. fandom yeah with like soccer and stuff yeah. but it's so you the American fandom is so unique. well an American football yeah especially college, college yeah, it's so I mean, there's confusing like, yeah if you're European you'd be like wait what is this it's so specific it's so specific yeah and, and especially southern yes college football yes it's just like another, Texas Georgia like, I don't even know right. how to explain it right I mean I've never been to a game but you kind of know but yeah it's I just, just it's couldn't imagine would love to know what's going on what's going through his head this Plus weekend. Plus it's like not every day is college quote unquote college game day with ESPN. Yes. So it's like doubly crazy yes. because all the care and they like, that's not what it is like every time. Right. Yeah. I saw Lance was there and also Zach Brown. Oh, 
yeah. So anyone that's, else? That's all I saw. Mm. Um, I don't know if there were other people there, but um, why did I bring up Kimmy? Oh, because of Lewis's replacement. Yeah. So that was a bummer. And he just was like, I'm out or so. I can't remember yeah. what he said, but it was also, oh, we forgot at the start when Lewis was like, this is very far back. <laughs> Like, well, and part of me yep. goes like too. Like Kimmy is watching Lewis Hamilton, who's an absolute legend. Yeah, and he's like, "Do you think he's just like, oh, my, what have I, <laughs> what am I doing?" Like he's scared. If Lewis can't do it. Oh, can I? I think, I think he feels like yes. I think he feels like he can. Yeah, I think he does too. Yeah, and not that Lewis can. Obviously, it's just everyone has an off week, I guess. Yeah, Carlos, um, prop like had a problem, started to smell. Fuel. Fuel. <laughs> and everyone seemed really lackadaisical about the whole thing. It was like, just like, okay. we'll keep you posted. Yeah. Your dad was like, you can't keep him posted. <laughs> There's a fuel leak, maybe. Yeah, or something going on. And yeah. they, you know, had some buttons he needed to push. And yeah. It was all fixed. Yeah. <laughs> Default 16 for something. something plus sign, and it was all fine. <laughs> fuel gone. <laughs> yeah. Fuel smell is like, a, just like a valve had to be yeah. closed. <laughs> um, but I was worried he was going to have to DNF, but all was fine. Um, George gets a penalty for overtaking. I don't even remember who he was over. Was it Fernando? Perhaps I don't even Maybe. remember who he was overtaking. But it was a little bit of a harsh penalty. To be fair, there was a few harsh penalties in terms of like overtaking. Well, and I didn't even hear Toto's response about the radio. I think he maybe were in the bathroom. Oh. But so yeah, George is told about the penalty, and he goes, "What?" In his George voice, and then Toto immediately comes on. He's like, "Total joke, George, about the penalty. Total joke," <laughs> which is just funny. I mean, it's it's nice to show yeah support, I suppose. Yeah. But I always love when Toto gets on the radio. Yeah, it's so funny because it's so, such a rarity. Yes, exactly. There was a point too. I can't remember. Honestly, sprint weekends are just like I can't I know, keep so anything. Much, especially together. When, when we had like uh, other stuff going on. Yeah, but usually when he he can s you you can see when he realizes he's on camera, but he doesn't ever look. Mm. But this time he looked like down the lens. Yes, and um, oh, I think Martin called it like his wolf stare or something like that. Yes, anyway, it just made me laugh. He was definitely like locked in. Um, and then uh. I I wrote that Fernando hates his life. Yeah. Because he was just, we were jo joking, like he had that beef with Liam in the sprint race. Then he was sort of beefing with Franco. Franco o overtook him. And I just wondered, he was just like, youths. <laughs> yeah, youths. I hate these kids. Like, get them out of here. <laughs> They're they, messing up my day. They're, they suck. But the yeah. thing, I think Martin um, or someone said this, that all these F2 guys, they do seem a lot more fearless with yeah. their overtaking and the risks that they take. And I, I'm sure at some points that's going to like, they're going to make yeah. a mistake or something, but um, it is fun. It is fun to see people trying to make stuff happen rather than just like waiting or just like, okay, it's been four or five laps and yeah. no one's making a move. Right. Um, Anyway, that Aston Martin's terrible now, so yeah, sucks. they need Adrian in a bad, bad way. Bad. So when does he start working for them? Twenty twenty six, I think. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, far away. Because Adrian's away. still with Red Bull now. He doesn't go on garden leave. No, he's. he's out. I think he. Well, that's a good question. I think he is with them. The gardening leave thing is always throws me off. Um, for the rest of the year, technically, okay. but yeah. like I don't know that he's actually actively working on the car. Yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, then there's all these penalties for track limits or overtake you know uh um, yeah. forcing a driver off the track pierre gets a penalty he had a bad i mean starting in p6 ending up out of the points k mag same thing starting in the points he had a pit again which i think cost him the points yeah um and then yuki yuki was oh yeah what did he say so liam was going on one stop and liam yuki started in what p11 yeah. liam starts in p19 i believe and um by the time liam pitted he came out ahead of yuki yeah. and what did yuki say why did that happen oh yeah why did that happen and then whatever and then no, no one, one responds responded. and then he said like no no really no, i'm asking how did that happen <laughs> which i did feel bad i mean again it's classic v-carb strategy yeah one person well gets good strategy and it was clear that he hadn't heard about his penalty yet I, I don't. I don't think it had happened yet. Or, or, or well, because no, that had. was part of the justification. Oh, was that the steward? Well, maybe the penalty hadn't been incurred, but the, they were like the stewards are looking at this. There's it's likely it. you're going to have a penalty, but like, and and maybe their strategy is not to tell him until it's official because you know he's yes. emotional. Um, but I did kind of think like, well, if you're going to do that, he's going to get pissed off. Like it seems like it would be easier to tell him first. Yes. But whatever. Yes. That's they a good know point. Better than me. But Yuki was just, yeah, not a great race for him in terms of 
the whole, that whole thing. And then he had his little spin mm-hmm. and it was just, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. I mean, he had a lot of good moments though. And his like battling with Checo and yeah. stuff. And I also yeah. think so much, I mean, Liam, like he was quote unquote lucky to avoid that cluster at the very start. Yeah. And like those four or five cars that kind of got caught, like he managed to overtake all those cars, which had it been a normal start, he would have had to like overtake all of those cars. Right. Um, and then, you know, just timing wise and things working out, strategy working out in his favor. He obviously did well too. He overtook cars and whatnot, but that's just kind of how it goes. Yeah, luck of the draw. Luck of the draw. Um, then we get to the real meat of the race, which was the Lando and Max battle. Yeah. And it was, it was great. It was I fun. actually love, I, sh- I shouldn't say actually, but like that's, I think they're my favorite drivers. Those two, I do like Charles and Carlos racing too, but Max and Lando battle, they're it's especially yeah. spicy. Yeah. Um, and I think I like it better with Max defending because mm-hmm. I just think he's a better, he's better at it. Yeah. And so it's a little bit more enticing, but it was just like, is he going to make the move? Yeah. Can he make the move? Then he does make the move, but then he sort of gets forced out. He gets a penalty for making the move. <laughs> well, yeah. Was he actually out? TBD. Then he then he does that crazy like under breaking. Yeah, that was really that scary. was a little sketchy. I'm not even sure. Maybe he got an extra penalty for that. Oh yeah, I don't. They know. don't even know. Um, that was a little dicey, and and he ended up. I mean, he did overtake Max, but then he ended up losing. And the whole question was should McLaren have told him immediately give the place back yeah because then he could have overtaken him again and actually kept the I don't know that's always a but hard I don't think call. he would have you don't think he would have no but then you would have avoided a penalty but I guess the other question people said was well what you don't know what the penalty would have been because f- he could have gotten a track limit right. penalty and if he was able to make up enough time ahead of max to make the yes. penalty null and void yes. then that would have been great yeah so in a way that's like true. what he did feels like the right move and he just couldn't get that's kind he, of he didn't what have enough time to get the five second gap that's also kind of what they said about the um other penalties like i think whoever it was pierre or someone that when they force the driver off the track sometimes it's like you kind of it's a kind of okay because you just need to get past the person yeah. and get in free air. And so you can kind of make up the time rather than just getting stuck behind someone. But yeah. anyway, um, I don't know what Lando said after the race. I mean, I'm, I'll be curious to see what his thoughts yeah. are of the situation. Yeah. Max was quite calm, cool, collected about his uh, quote unquote opinions on the, well, they're, it's not a quote, their opinions, but yes. I just thought it usually, I feel like sometimes he's a little bit more vocal, but he was just like, I have my opinions, but this isn't the place to share them. Well, I could tell, Jensen was kind of trying to bait him yeah. into something, which, you know, all That's great Jensen's interviews job. do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he Max doesn't feel easily baited. No, though. he, no, 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 <laughs> so, no. That is very true. No. He is. He's Jensen probably going to ask Lando a question. Yeah. I'm trying to think who's like the easy, who's like the person you could bait the easiest. Fernando. Yeah. I guess like the ones well, that if are, he's wanting to stir the pot. Yes. It's the people who, who want to stir the pot and who aren't afraid to just say what they think yeah yeah there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a handful of people that are gonna be a little bit salty i think post-race yeah. and i'll be curious to read their thoughts oh yeah and we didn't i think we kind of mentioned that k-mag had to like immediately come in and pit because of yeah we still don't know why they, they thought it was maybe he had like a uh tear away like stuck in his oh, right break or like um a puncture and that he happened to be right by the pit lane so then it was just a quick easy urgent like get in here now yeah it's like well yeah of course i mean when it's like when they say that it's like well yeah it's either gonna happen right now or it's gonna happen in a like it's not like he can he has to do it when he when only when he can do it but i guess they meant like don't mess around yeah you know what else really drives me nuts the the fact that okay we are in this sport is like the peak height of engineering right yes in sports yes and we are focused now on taking a uh the fastest lap point away but we are still allowing plastic to fly around and get sucked up into these cars that can cause real scary damage i know tell me why we haven't figured out i know another solution. i don't know why they just don't say like put them in a little like in a thing in your car or yeah, I, like I, I understand them to the wall of your car yeah or i don't something. understand i mean the idea that we're just sending them I is know. crazy or they should be like you're only allowed to take it off in the pit lane or something like something. that i mean i understand like 
but that's that's obviously dicey yeah. because if you're driving and something's on your visor Absolutely. and you need to remove it i just think that we need to do something different yeah. or like if they have i mean i know it makes it heavier but like if there's a magnetic strip on them or something that you can like they need to stay in the car with you yeah we this is crazy yeah because it really could cause serious damage and it's well not, it does and it does it like will and it's someone, ruin people's races yeah yeah and could but like could also seriously hurt someone yeah. potentially I don't know. It's just crazy to me. It is funny. Um, But yes, let's definitely take the point away for fastest lap because that just only helps people. Speaking of fastest lap. So Franco had the fastest lap. He was in P10 and Williams is in a fight with Alpine and the constructors. And so what did Esteban do? He pulled the good old Danny Rick special and he went out on softs, got that fastest lap away from Franco. So and of course, the only reason I'm annoyed is because. I was excited for Franco to have the fastest lap, but like when Daniel did it, it was fine because we are a biased podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, but good. I mean, good job. Good job for us. Like, yeah. And obviously, I, I mean, I feel like that was not, he obviously doesn't know who I, his team was the one that told him yeah. to do that. Like and I think, he doesn't I know. Think that's fun. Like part of the strategy. Yes. yes like, exactly. I, I don't, like that doesn't I mean, yes, it's going to bother you if they take, if the fastest lap gets taken away from the driver that you want to have it. Yes. But it's fun. It's part of the game. Yeah. Actually, Fernando said that. So they were somebody asked. Um, they were asking because obviously now that they've t- t- you know chosen to take it away, they've been asking drivers about it. And Fernando was asked about kind of what happened in Singapore, and he was like, "That's just part of Formula One. Yeah, like that's just he's he most. I don't think most. I actually haven't heard any F one driver, even Lando, who was. And now maybe that's because he likes Daniel. Yeah, and sure. Whatever, but I haven't heard one person complain about it. No, because that's the sport. And yeah. like when you are a team who struggles getting points at races, if the only strategy you can use at that race is to take a point away from yeah. somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Full send, babe. Yeah. So anyway. I don't know. It's interesting. Um, Stupid. But yeah, so I wanted to shout out. Well, we had, um, we'll get to Charles, but we had George passing Checo. Mm-hmm for what was it p6 i think i think so which again is tough because checo started in 10th and george started from the pit lane you know that's not good (laughs) um and george didn't have the upgraded car either right all that stuff was old so that wasn't great Um, good on george that's a great finish for a pit lane start and and a penalty and a penalty you're right penalty yeah yeah yeah. good for him so good for him liam obviously getting points first race back with v-carb i get back with v-carb um and Franco getting points as well. So congrats, everyone. The young bucks um, strike again. Uh, I was going to say something else and I, I forgot. Oh, we didn't even really talk about Lance. Like, I don't know. Who cares? I don't talk about him a lot. <laughs> Who cares? I guess he's he's really, game. he has really been M-I-A. anonymous. Yeah. He's very Genuinely, under the radar like, right now. I actually saw a tweet about that this week or maybe it was last week. Someone said like, Nobody talks about Lance anymore, like positively or yeah. negatively. He is just never discussed. I yeah. feel like every other driver that I can think of is discussed in some capacity. Yeah, and it's really just if his name is mentioned, it's because someone is passing him or he passed someone. Yes. That's all. That's it. It's like, very interesting. It's really Do interesting. Do you think there's an embargo on talking <laughs> about him? I don't think, I just don't think there's anything to say. Yeah, that's fair. He does keep a pretty low pro. He does <laughs> very much a low pro, 100%. Um, so, so Carlos, um, what was what's the word undercut i, I almost said understruck oh undercut oh. Uh, max to get into p2 uh which is why we had the lando max battle for p3 um but then we had charlotte Claire. i mean it was a classic you know he gets the lead in turn one and then he has the lead for the rest it of the was race very, i was very excited for him yeah i he was deserved, very happy he genuinely deserves races like that every now and then 100%. you know percent and this, he just drives his freaking heart out this season has been he has had some really good wins i mean obviously winning in monaco was great winning in monza was great yeah and and now being able to win um here and i just it is we said this a thousand times but it is really fun i feel like mercedes is kind of they were at for a period of time contending for wins and i feel like that's kind of gone away but it really is crazy that every week there's three teams yeah maybe four depending on the strategy or whatnot but that could win a race yeah like that's crazy. i mean the fact that Charles leclerc has won three races yes is awesome yes and carlos has won twice right yeah and Lando's oh, wait, wait wait no 
I think he just won once. And Lando's won. A few times. Like, what are we and talking Oscar's about? Oscar's won, and Lewis has won, yeah. and George has won. The first two seasons of Formula One I ever watched, Red Bull won all but one race. Well, oh yeah, because you didn't see Charles win those first few races no. that you that, of, of the season, right? Yeah. Um, Crazy. So anyway, ha- very obviously very happy for Charles Leclerc and redemption from last Last year, getting, I mean, he didn't win and get it was disqualified. Quite an, it was the closest to an inner reverse we could have asked for. It was the closest we could get. Um, so and in a way, Lewis's uh, day was also sort of an inner reverse because he didn't get any excitement. It yeah. was just all bad. <laughs> so it was like a yeah, you negative up and down. reverse. Yeah, it's like, yeah. but you know, we couldn't have gotten both, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> um, wait, I was going to say something. Oh, and you know who I feel like was kind of MIA this weekend was Oscar. Yeah. Like, he just was sort of, I mean, he was fine. He didn't yeah. do anything bad. Oh, well, I guess he did in um, sprint qualifying. Sure. But, uh, and then I guess the sprint, he. But was yeah, there just, really wasn't much. He from just him. was kind of, I mean, we did he make one, one overtaking no. overtake during the race? I feel like he didn't, or we didn't see it at no. least. I don't think he did. Yeah. What, what was it? Plan A or? Ambitious. Ambitious. Oh, please have, he said plan A is too ambitious. Yeah. Love Oscar. And then said a nice hello to Martin. And that was really all I saw of him. <laughs> He really, he could also, he could also be in the Lance Stroll anonymous, like mm-hmm. voluntarily, but like the reality is he's too good that you can't ignore. Correct. Um, and he participates a lot more than Lance. Correct. Um, maybe because he has to, but, <laughs> <laughs> but he's a good sport about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else from the race? I don't think so. <laughs> oh, they did say that um, Ferrari is now only, I think, eight points behind Red Bull for second place in the constructors. It's very exciting that the constructors very is exciting. Up I think McLaren's pretty much got it locked and loaded just because of, you know, they have Lando and Oscar. Yeah, I know. But um, it's just, I think it's going to be fun. Like, even if there's not a battle for the Drivers' Championship, yeah. it will be fun if there's um, some sort of battle toward in the last two races for yeah. like, constructors yeah the key Mix i mean up. really i think the only way that max is going to lose this this championship is if in the next couple races he he has a dnf yeah and lando wins like yeah. in the same race mm-hmm. because that would be a 25 point swing and then okay then then stuff could happen but it seems so unlikely it seems unlikely um but never say never literally never say never okay let's do our draft okay. for mexico you won't be here for mexico but we and still you won't be here for brazil yeah um so also this flash oh and let me had charles or you had charles and i had max yeah and actually hold on a second i went through and i did i actually went through and got all the points google docked it all up oh, wow. um and so and i wrote down who we can't get anymore anymore and let me see if i could find it um here it is so you are currently if my math and i also should say too i obviously haven't added the points from this weekend yet and i will do that but um i think originally when we said the points stuff when it came to a sprint qualifying Mm -hmm. we only did we did um half points from like p1 to p8 Mm -hmm. but i i just extended it to p to p10 If, if if you get into sq3 you will get a p- at least somewhat like you know 10 points for p1 or no sorry five points for p1 a half point if you get p10 okay so just wanted to clarify that if anyone's cares so currently you have 182 points okay and i have 173.5 points okay so whatever that is eight and a half I mean, points you'll be in the lead after this weekend huh you'll be in the lead after this weekend maybe from this sp- no i don't know you will because max won oh. the sprint and oh. max well actually i don't know that's a good question GBD. Yeah, I actually might. I actually might be ahead. Neck. Um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. And the drivers I cannot get, I believe, are Valtteri, Lando, Joe, George, Daniel, Carlos, or Charles. So does that mean if da- does Daniel count as Liam, or is oh, we I don't we don't even have Liam in here? Well, I know. I think from now if on, I draw if, we, Daniel, if we draw Daniel, it it's means Liam. Liam okay. but we don't. Valtteri, thank God, I can't get him. <laughs> <laughs> um. Dun, 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 dun. Fernando. Oh, fun. Fun. He sucks. I mean, the car sucks. He's great. Let me just write this down. I got Chuck. Can I get him again? Oh, I can or am I see. Done? You cannot. I didn't think so. <sighs> you cannot. Sad. Wish I would have gotten him on his on days. 
Yuki. You can get Yuki. Great. Is that my second time getting him? Or my Let me see. Uh, I believe it's your second. Um, so he'll go to the list. Let's see. Hannah. Hannah. That's me. Yes. That's your second time getting Yuki. Okay. Um, and that is my first time getting Fernando, I believe. Congrats. Yeah. I haven't Are we drawing for Brazil too? Or do we want to just wait until day up? Uh, we can wait. We're, well, we're not recording together that one. Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay, okay let's see Tay Tay. Yes. <laughs> um. Okay, Brazil. Oh. Now I need to double check I and see. Have yeah, because oh. we both can't get him anymore. Okay, gosh. Or no, actually, you can. You can. Sorry, you, you can get Valtteri. Put him back. Okay. Well, I put him back. So just okay. if you get him, you'll have to throw him away. Charles, I cannot get. Oscar. Woo. Woo, Oscar. Um, put him back. Oh, no, I keep him. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Well, I'm going to keep Charles over here because I oh. can't get him either. Yes. <laughs> this is great podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> the dead air is insane. <laughs> Lewis. Lewis, I believe you're good with that. God, I hope he gets it together. And Brazil is a That's great race true. for Lewis. Knock on wood. That is his and his dad goes to that honorary one, right? race. Sometimes and his dad goes to Mexico too. Oh, we yeah. might get. Oh my god, we might get, get Checo dad and content. Lewis's dad content. I hope so. It's my favorite thing about Checo. That's <laughs> literally. I want that so bad. Oh, that would be great. That would be great. What's Checo's dad's name? Oh, I feel like I know it. Let me look it up. Um, Lewis's dad's Anthony, right? Should I make that up? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And uh, sorry, I got confused because Lando's dad's Adam. Oh, I, yeah. That's news to me. Yeah. Um. All right. Sergio's dad. Antonio. Yes. I think. No. Okay. Wait. Sorry. This is the best. Episode Someone's we've screaming. Ever <laughs> oh yes, and and <laughs> Antonio. Someone's screaming. It's so true. I've done that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yellow I actually really speakers. love. Um, I I feel like this these this run of races, Austin, Mexico, Brazil is maybe my favorite. Yeah, trifecta. Th yeah, I really like all three of them, and I feel like the vibe, like the Austin vibe, the Mexico vibe, and then the Brazil vibe. Not that I feel like the vibes very good in Europe too. It's just like a different. The spirit is it's just different. Yeah. It's different. Well, and the tracks are so different. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like, yeah, the Americas as a, I don't know. There's just a different energy that, yeah. that comes around, which is, um, it's just more loud. I feel like it's a little bit more like party vibe. Yeah. It's in a sense. boisterous. Yeah. It's yeah. Less sophisticated. Yeah, it's more boisterous. I would, but I would say there's some European tracks where it's not sophisticated, but it's yes, more. Yeah. What? I said, that's fair. Oh, um, yeah, it's just different, but it's but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm and excited. Looking forward to it. So yeah, next weekend. Oh, and we need a word. If you have a word, it doesn't oh. matter. But just if you have, if you think of something. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say magic in Mexico. Okay. There's uh, like magic in my or no, we said miracles. miracles. What would be a miracle in my in Mexico? Honestly, for the Mexico fans, like Checo winning. winning would be a yeah. would be a, a miracle. Yeah. Um. Last year was not good for him. No, oh, he didn't. He didn't have to immediately. <laughs> oh, that was, that so was bad. So I bad. I felt so awful. That was so bad. <laughs> Poor Antonio. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Um, I mean, there's so many M words you could choose. I from know. Him. Magnificent. Magnificent, or like mayhem. Ooh, I want that mayhem one. Mayhem in Mexico. Yeah, that'll be fun. It can mean so many things. It can mean so many things. And then, is it Brazil or Interlagos? Um, it's Brazil. Okay. Um, Brazilian GP. Yep. Uh, hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Battle, battle. Oh, that could mean like title fight. Battle in Brazil. Battle in Brazil. I'm gonna say. Um, uh, the only word I can that's coming into, into my head is ballin. <laughs> but that's it. not what I want to say. That's hilarious. But what does that even mean? Ballin. <laughs> <laughs> like, that doesn't make wow. any sense. Um, sure, I'll keep that. If I think of something different, I'll text you and you can okay. you can put it on the. On, on the episode cool um sorry we didn't ask for you guys as questions this week but we had to get this yeah in done. all transparency the chiefs are playing and zoe's <laughs> itching that was just like she's not watching the game yet yeah we which i had a respect. chaotic weekend but i'm happy we got to watch the race happy we got to watch it on tv 
happy we got to watch it together. Yeah, it was the first race we watched together all so season. So fun, and it's probably going to be the last. No. Well, on TV. No. Oh. Maybe we can watch Abu Dhabi um, if we want to. If we want. <laughs> um, it's early. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And thank you all. A lot of people responded to our the stories I posted of us at the wedding. Oh, good. Um, just so everyone knows, I requ- I told the bride to put – well, I asked her. I didn't tell her. I, I asked her if she could put no hands <laughs> – on the wedding playlist or i suggested it yeah, as yeah, a, yeah. you know this is it's gonna it's going the crowd going and it got hannah going so and well, it was early it was, just, it was early and, but it was funny because i said to one of um zoe's friends who's also my friend but one of her college friends i was like do you think it's too early for no hands i said do you think they all even play no hands and not joking three minutes later no hands came on and it was so wonderful it was great so and we, I, I was so happy to hear that you had made it happen yes but I was also hoping that I had just manifested it. Yes. But I guess it reverse engineered. I, I I did suggest it as a as a as an option. So I'm glad. I'll that never it, not dance when that song. Of comes course, on. it's a great. It's a great. As I said, it's a crowd pleasing song. It that is. and Mr. Brightside. Oh God, you guys, Mr. That, Brightside at a wedding is got, so unhinged. It's that wild. That got the crowd going. It's a. It's the quickest it way to is. fill dance really floor, is. and it's really upsetting to me. But it's, it's funny. Just, it's so interesting how it, that song is like. I don't know what like subliminal. It's. it's the I always think of like the Josie and the Pussycats. How they like put subliminal messaging in the songs. <laughs> yes. I just like wonder what they've put in that song yeah. that gets everyone to the dance floor. It's that riff, that guitar riff at the start. Yeah. It just gets people going. But anyway, um, everyone sent nice messages hoping we had a good time. Oh, thank you. You know, all that stuff. So it was great. It was great. It was fun. Um, so yeah, Hannah will be gone next weekend. I'll have guests for that, which will be great. Then I'll be gone the following weekend. She'll I have, have a guest for that. that. So we won't be together for a couple weeks, but then we will reunite during the break between the triple headers yeah. to do something fun. Yeah. Probably just re rehash what went down and yeah and then get ready for v for vegas get ready for v for is vegas. that the, is vegas the next race after brazil yeah wow yeah okay so it's, it's gonna be great it's exciting. so thank you all for listening thank you all for just you know everything the vibes the best. always yeah you guys always are the, best. the best and for anyone who went to coda we hope you had a wonderful yes. fabulous time and hope you had the best weekend yeah. um and yeah we're excited for all that's to come anything else no All right, guys, we'll see you next time on Shantae. Shantae.